Do you have a stockpile of old hard drives laying around? Or even a used system taking up space that you'd actually kind of like to recycle, but you don't want your personal data to get out? Well, that's okay, because today we're looking at a product that promises to easily erase your data for good. Stay tuned. So, you have a computer that you're ready to retire. This has been a great system for many years, but it's just too old and not worth updating. We've all been there. However, since this computer has been part of your life for so many years, there has to be a massive amount of personal information on it, and you can't just throw it into the e-waste pile. So, what do you do then? You could just format your hard drive, but formatting your drive or just deleting files doesn't really get rid of anything. Yeah, data is recoverable. When you delete a file, the computer doesn't actually overwrite the space on the drive that the file takes up. It simply eliminates the record within the file association table that points to the data on the drive. Formatting also doesn't clear the free space on the drive. It simply creates a new partition table that doesn't know where the files are located anymore. You know, I've had customers who brought their computers into some unnamed big box stores, and instead of fixing their computer, they just format and reload Windows with no consideration of the customer's data on the drive. In many cases, if I get the computer right away, I can recover those files. In the same way, malicious individuals can recover those files off of your recycled computer too. In fact, it's not even uncommon for that to happen. Because of this, many people will take a hard drive out and e-waste the rest of the computer. And you know, that's a viable option. Unfortunately, you're gonna end up with a closet full of hard drives that you have nothing you can do with. So, if you don't want an excess amount of hard drives like I have here, then there are many alternatives that you can use to destroy the data on your drive so you can properly recycle the drive. Today, we're looking at one of those alternatives with the red key. Technically, before filming a video, I will go over the process that I am demonstrating several times just so I know exactly what I'm gonna film. However, in this video, I'm completely winging it. I have no idea how this product works or if it's even gonna work at all. In fact, I haven't even opened the package that the drive came in. So, let's look at what this comes with and then we'll get into destroying some data. So what I have in front of me right here is what the package came with. Now, I don't know if this is what comes with every retail product or if this is just what Red Key sent me. I'm kind of thinking they just sent me a reviewer's pack that has a lot in it that won't come in the original. But I got the Ultimate Edition Red Key. This is the highest Red Key that they sell. They actually sell three different editions and I'll go over those at the end of the video. They come with an instruction card, which essentially tells you that you have to activate your Red Key. And you know, I'm really hoping that doesn't mean we we have to create yet another account, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. And it also comes with this neat little USB adapter. And I'm not sure exactly what it's for yet, but I can see lots of possibilities for me using this in the future for other things, not necessarily wiping data. And also it came with some keychains and some stickers, which to be honest with you, I don't know for sure what I'm gonna use these for, but I'm definitely not gonna stick red key stickers on my car. And these are like the biggest keychains I've ever seen in my life, but you know, they are what they are. So what we need to do now is open this thing up and activate it and try to destroy some data and see how it works. So I'm assuming to open it, we just have to tear the back of the package off here. It's definitely sealed well. Oh, there we go. All right, so I have a serial number in here with an activation code that I have to scrape off, and then we can get onto the computer and see how it works. Okay, we plug the red key into the computer, and it appears to be an empty drive. That's interesting. So if we go into the directions here and look, we need to go and activate it, and I'm assuming when we activate it, that's how we go about putting software onto the drive. I guess they really don't want you to use it without activating it. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. So I'm gonna open up a browser window and we're gonna go to the website they tell us to go to, which is redkeyusb.com forward slash pages forward slash activate update software. Wow, that's a mouthful. 
I think they should probably use a URL shortener to make that a little bit shorter, but you know, if it works, it works, right? So we're gonna go ahead and download the updater here. And once it's downloaded, we're gonna go ahead and run it. Our language is English and it has detected the device. What we're gonna do now is we're going to select this device and it's checking for an existing version, which it has none on it. So we're gonna go ahead and put in the activation key and I'm gonna go ahead and block this key so you guys can't steal my key. Go buy the product and you'll get your own key. All right, after I entered that in, I'm gonna go ahead and hit activate and it says, please wait, updating version. All right, so I guess now we just have to push update software, hit accept, proceed. It is not possible to reverse this product. Okay, yes, I understand. All right, so now it's downloading the software and I'm assuming it's writing it to the USB drive now. Oh, it looks like we have to select a download server. Well, that's, that's pretty obvious. Let's do Ohio, all right. So it looks like it's gonna take a minute to update the software, but it looks like activating the USB key itself doesn't actually require an account. So that's definitely a benefit. That's one of the things that I thought was gonna be a complaint on this thing, but it doesn't look like that's gonna be the case. So once it finishes updating, I'll go ahead and meet you back in Windows. All right, so the update finally finished. So we have the latest version of the Red Key USB software on the USB thumb drive. In fact, let's check out the drive. And as you can see, we definitely have a whole bunch of files in the drive now. It's definitely not an empty drive anymore. So at this point, it looks like it's ready to use. We can just unplug it and plug it into the system and see if it wipes data. All right, so we have the latest version of the Red Key software on the USB drive, and now we're gonna see if we can destroy some data. I'm gonna go ahead and destroy the drive that I currently have in the eWaste Gaming PC. It's just a small, non-consequential drive that I use to make videos, but I did copy some data over to it so we can do a data recovery at the end and see if it actually destroyed everything on the drive. So without further ado, let's go destroy some data. Okay. We need to stop this video here. After this point, the rest of the video essentially became a dumpster fire. Everything prior to this point went exactly as planned, but after this point can best be described as a burning pile of dung left on your worst enemy's porch. After three failed attempts to wipe the drive, I basically gave up. As you can see, Windows is still running on the system. The problem was, at a certain point, the program needs to put the system into sleep mode in order to unfreeze the drive. Once the system goes into sleep, it never wakes up again. I tried both in the graphical mode as well as in the text mode with no success. So after contacting RedKey, it turns out that because this tool is based on Linux, it doesn't have a lot of support for more modern graphics cards. Their suggestion was to first try it in text mode, which I did and it failed, or I could try pulling the GPU out and either run it with the integrated graphics or an older GPU. And you know, since I have this GPU plumbed in with Hardline, I wasn't gonna pull it out of the system. So the next best thing, this system here is a fourth generation i5 that I use for data recovery and wiping drives ironically. So this system should be the perfect candidate to try this software on. So. Give me a second to get this system hooked up and we'll get back to wiping a drive. All right, now that I have this system hooked up, as you can see, I'm running a fresh copy of Windows 10 on it. This copy of Windows 10 is just running on a 120 gig SSD I use in my shop for testing purposes. I did go ahead and copy over some images into the My Pictures folder, just so that we have something to look for in a data recovery that we're gonna do afterwards. Now, let's get this system booted up into Red Key and I'll start off right where we left off before. Okay, we're back in Red Key now. Hopefully this will be for the last time. And we're right here on the first page where we set our resolution. We're gonna go ahead and leave it at 1920 by 1080. We're gonna hit okay. It's gonna to switch to the next screen here. And this computer actually does have a built-in speaker. I don't know if we got that far into it in the last one, but as you can see, it's a real annoying sound, but you can get rid of it just by clicking on the timer. And then for language, we're gonna go ahead and hit okay. 
And then there's where it wants us to test the speakers. And you know what? We can turn audio off. That's really nice. Just for the purpose of this video, it might actually help you out to have the audio just to warn you when screens are gonna change because the, a lot of these screens are timed and they will jump to the next screen if you don't tell it not to do that. And that could kind of be annoying, especially if you're trying to read each screen. So we're gonna go ahead and hit okay again. And there we go. We're now on the welcome screen. We're gonna go ahead and hit okay. And at this point, we get to pick which actual wipe method we're gonna use. And we're gonna use wipe wizard. So we're gonna click on wipe wizard and we're gonna tell it this whole computer. And then from here, we're gonna go ahead and hit okay. This is just a description of what the whole computer means. We're gonna hit okay here. Okay, so at this point, it's gonna ask you which drives you wanna wipe. It, after it detects all of your drives, it gives you the option to check which ones to wipe. And this is really handy if you only wanna wipe a specific drive on a system and not all the drives that the system has. But I gotta give you a little warning right here. This program is permanent. So if you wipe a drive accidentally, then it's on you. You've lost all the data on that drive. So I highly recommend if you're going to be wiping drives to make sure you only have drives in the system that you plan on wiping. Don't even have drives plugged in that you don't want wiped. Just as a little tip. Okay, so right here, we're gonna go ahead and check our OneDrive. This is the one we want wiped. It's 120 gig SATA SSD. Once we've checked that, we're gonna go ahead and hit OK. And then from here, it gives you the option to either wipe the entire disk or just parts of the disk. If you just wanna wipe like a specific partition, we're gonna use the whole disk here. And then at this point, it gives you a warning that all data will be erased on that disk. So if you have an operating system on that disk, the system will not boot after you finish the wipe. So keep that in mind. So we're gonna go ahead and hit okay. And then it tells you, are you sure? And we're gonna hit okay again. So I'm gonna stop the timer real quick here, just so I can explain what's happening here. Now the disk is frozen, so the computer needs to go into sleep and then awake from sleep in order to re-unfreeze the disk so that the program can wipe it. Now this is the point where I had the problem before. Once it went into sleep, it simply never woke up. So we're gonna go ahead and let it go to sleep this time and see if it wakes up. I happen to know for a fact that it will because I've done this in the background a few times before I tried to film this again, but let me show you what to do. All right, so once we're into this section, we're gonna go ahead and hit sleep now. Okay, so once it wakes up from sleep, it gives you a chance to be able to confirm that it's woken up. And as you can see here, we've only got about 15 seconds to go. So I gotta go ahead and hit yes. Okay, so as soon as we hit start right here, we're gonna start wiping this drive. So let's go ahead and get to it. And there we go, the white process has begun. Right here, it goes through a couple little things. It tells us it's gonna take 60 minutes. I don't think it's gonna take that long, but we'll find out. Okay, so the white process has started and it says it's gonna take 60 minutes, but I don't think it's gonna take that long. In fact, on this drive, 120 gig SSD, the times I've tested it in the past, it's taken about two minutes. So. We'll see how long this is gonna take, and then I'll get back to you once it's finished. So, it seems things work better when I have a little preparation. If you guys would like to see the section that turned into a dumpster fire, then let me know in the comments below, and I'll make a separate video with that footage. If anything, it's kind of funny watching me fail repeatedly. This program actually wiped 120 gig SSD really fast. Took about a minute and a half. I also tested it on a one terabyte spinning disk and it took about two and a half hours. So the time it takes to wipe a disk is going to be entirely dependent on how big the disk is and how fast the disk is. Also, I went ahead and ran some data recovery software off camera and found absolutely no remnants of files left on the drive. You can see that right here. I'm using the USB-C version of this product and it comes in three different versions. There's the home version, which comes with just basic features for wiping drives and sells for 30 bucks. There's the professional version that comes with the same features as the home version, but also includes some reporting functionality and it sells for $60. 
Finally, there's the ultimate version, which I'm using here, and that comes with all of the features of the other versions, but also includes the ability to wipe mobile devices like iOS and Android, and that one sells for $90. Whichever version you need is gonna be dependent on the features you're looking for. So I'll put a link to their website in the description below that will have more detailed description of each version. Now, we need to address the elephant in the room. Why would I pay for a product whose functionality I can get free using programs like D-Band? This is a great question, and it's the one question I asked Redkey before I did this review. Their response was that one of the reasons why you would want to use Redkey over the free alternatives is that it's an easy and prepackaged solution that doesn't require you to go through the process of creating a bootable USB device. This is a very valid reason for purchasing this device. As long as you're using hardware that's supported, that easy level falls off a cliff pretty quick when you're using hardware that's not supported like I originally did. Also, solutions like D-Band don't include an ATA erase function that is capable of wiping hidden areas of the drive. Now, for a home user, I don't necessarily think that's a big selling point. The ATA erase functions essentially use the drive's firmware itself to erase the disk, and it's able to not only wipe the visible areas of the disk, but also wipe areas that may have been marked bad or reallocated. This is especially important when it comes to SSDs. However, for home users, I still don't think that's too big of a deal. This software comes with a whole list of compliance certifications, most of which I have no idea what they are, like the CPI, HIPAA, GDPR, or CCPA. If you plan on using this program in a corporate environment, those certifications are probably important to you. As a quick side note, there are other free alternatives that can do the ATA erase function, but they're a lot more complicated and in some cases require you to use the console commands in Linux. So it's definitely not for the novice computer user. So, should you use RedKey? Well, honestly, that's up to you and completely dependent on what your needs are. This is a very easy and secure way to wipe the drives of your old systems. It is absolutely imperative that you securely erase a hard drive before it leaves your possession. So, whether you use a free alternative or a paid alternative like RedKey, it is absolutely necessary that you do something with your old drives. And you know, stacking them up in your closet probably isn't the best alternative. So, for people that don't have a lot of experience, I highly recommend using a device like RedKey. For 30 bucks, you can have the peace of mind to know that your data is gone. However, if you're a little more of an advanced user and the certifications aren't that important to you, then go ahead and check out this video where I show you a free alternative that pretty much does the same thing. Well, kind of. Anyway, you guys have a great day.